In this video, I want to briefly cover some common structures of data teams. And this includes not just people on the data engineering side itself, but those that operate around it so that you can have a better understanding of common overall structures. Or if you're trying to start your own team, how you can think about possibly aligning things. So this isn't going to be super deep. It's just a high level overview again with just some visuals. And this right here is what I call the three pillars of data engineering. This is from another video that you're welcome to check out. But I like to use this as a visual to help explain where certain things or certain people might be operating in the grand high level scheme of a data platform. So you have your sources and your source systems, a central hub, let's call this a data warehouse or a data lake, kind of everything in the middle there, data transformation, all this stuff happening here. And then insights would be uh, data visualization, machine learning, stuff like that. But number one, let's start with product. And by product, I'm talking about those who own the source system. So the, let's say Salesforce or QuickBooks or MailChimp, Google Ads, or whatever it is, or internal databases, anything that is going to be a source for your data team has to have some owners. And typically that could be a product team and there could be in unique product teams for different sources, depending on the size of your company, or maybe there's just one team that owns all of it. Probably unlikely, it's usually broken up a little bit. This might also be, instead of a product, you could consider this software developers, really the people building the applications and all that stuff if you have in-house software developers. At the end of the day, these are people responsible for everything before it gets to your data warehouse and your central hub of activity. Next is the data engineer. And this is where I imagine most of us are operating. And that is the pipelining and the back end work from getting the sources into some sort of central hub, creating those integrations, creating the data transformation, scheduling it, all that stuff to get it moving along and into something that the rest of the company can then use. And you're probably going to be working a lot with the people on the product end. Again, this could be software engineers or product owners, whatever you want to call that to understand schemas, to make sure logic is correct, all that stuff. Next, I'm going to hop to data analyst and there's a gap in between and we'll talk about that. But the data analyst is somebody who's sitting in between the data architecture. So that central hub, the, all of the technical aspects back here, but also the insights that are getting sent to your stakeholders and to your business users, to external users, whatever that is. So they're bridging that gap between technical users and business users, being able to communicate requests back to the engineers and even further back along so that everyone is on the same page and that making sure what is being delivered from this central hub is meeting the needs of the business. And they also will be technical enough to create reports, create dashboards, write queries, possibly use other tools like DBT to generate custom models and custom data for themselves to analyze because they're the data analyst. All right, next is what's called the analytics engineer. And this is relatively new, but this is somebody who's more of a hybrid between a full on data engineer working with the integrations and more of the back end stuff and the data analyst who's more forward facing and user facing, but they're a little bit more, I guess, technical than a typical data analyst. But that's not to say data analysts aren't technical because a lot of times they are. It's just this hybrid middle ground and tools like DBT specifically have really brought this to the forefront because more people are becoming more skilled with data, with SQL, automation, stuff like that. It's becoming more accessible for more people. And it's become this kind of nuanced position where data engineers are slowly starting to become more back end, pushing a little bit further back, more of the integrations. So often what you'll see is the data engineer and the analytics engineer are working very closely together. And it's also possible that this concept is falling under one of these other names. It's just depending on how the company refers to it, really, and if they want to break it up. But let's just say, for example, a data engineer might handle the back end integrations for bringing the sources in, creating that system there, the automation, the scheduling, as well as maybe the core data model. Then the analytics engineer will work on top of that data model to create more custom facing data models for user purposes to which the data analyst can connect to and do some more stuff. Or maybe the analytics engineer is also the analyst, totally up to the company, but it's just the idea of it sitting in the middle between those two concepts. And it's something you're probably going to hear a lot more about as you go through your career. And last but not least is the data scientist. And to me, data science, for whatever reason, for many years gets confused with data engineering. And it's not the same thing. To me, data science is more of machine learning, predictive, statistical, math driven type of data analysis and gathering insights that way. But it's based typically off of the structure and back end that the data engineer has designed, modeled, put together so that it's easy for, again, more predictive analytics and based on algorithms and math and statistics, all that stuff that the data engineer really wouldn't be too concerned with. The data analyst is probably not going to be doing that kind of analysis. They're probably going to be more of dashboards and uh, insights through reporting, 
and custom models and, and things like that. And I'll end this by saying it's not always as clear cut as what I said here, but hopefully this helps put some concepts into buckets and in the grand scheme of what a data architecture looks like. So you can figure out what maybe is best for you, how you want to structure your team or how to operate in this environment in general. So I hope you found this helpful. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.